Hey guys, we're going to be talking about 12 common mistakes that bird owners make now. If you find that you are making these mistakes, then that's okay. It is never too late to make better changes so your birds can live a happier and healthier life. And no one's perfect. I've also made some of these mistakes myself. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel, if you haven't already, for more parrot related videos and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we a new video. 1. The first common mistake that bird owners make is feeding their birds an all seed or a seed mixed diet. Now this is probably the most common misconception about owning parrots, and a lot of people think that seeds or seed mixes are all parrot seed. And I was guilty of this too, a seed diet alone for parrots is not nutritionally balanced, and it's way too fattening especially for our pet birds. Our birds aren't flying around all day, searching for food, and they're not burning off as much calories as they would be in the wild, and if they're being fed an all-seed diet then they are likely to develop health issues as like fatty liver disease obesity and heart disease. Wild parrots don't just eat seeds all day either they also eat fruits, nuts, flowers, and vegetation, so our parents are going to need a varied diet consisting of pellets, vegetables, some fruit, legumes and grains, and seeds should only be fed as a treat or used during training or teaming. The second common mistake that bird owners make is not incorporating foraging into your bird's routine. Wild parrots spend a majority of their day searching for food, so our birds should be doing the same thing too. We often just fill our birds' bowls with food and leave it for them to eat, which doesn't sound engaging at all. Foraging for parrots is mentally stimulating and it helps with boredom, destructive, and hormonal behavior, and it should be gradually introduced into their routine. Our birds are incredibly smart but they do need to be taught how to forage, especially if all they know is how to eat straight from a bowl. There are so many different ways to introduce foraging, and one easy way is to just add more food, bowls into your bird's cage, and only fill up one or two bowls so your bird needs to learn how to look in all of the food bowls for food. The third mistake is not getting enough toys or getting the wrong toys. Just like with foraging toys also provide mental stimulation for birds and also prevents boredom, parrots will eventually get used to new toys which is why parrot owners need to constantly switch toys around and get new toys as old ones get destroyed or when your birds lose interest. You also need to keep in mind the types of toys you're getting as well and it's always best to stick to natural toys and toy parts that don't pose a risk to our parrots. Too small of a toy and your bird may swallow pieces that they aren't supposed to, and not removing damaged toys risks the chance of your birds getting caught in the toy. It's also best to not include any types of cotton rope toys in their cage, because over time your birds could be ingesting small cotton fibers, and eventually suffer from crop impaction. The fourth common mistake is leaving your parrots in the cage all day. Parrots are social animals, and they crave interaction with their humans, and some parrot owners leave their birds in the cage all day, and never let their birds out which isn't something that you want to do. This will cause boredom which will lead to unwanted behaviors, like aggression and self-mutilation. Your parrots are going to need at least a few hours of interaction a day, outside of their cages, and yet for most birds that may not be enough. And if this situation applies to you, can work on letting your bird out more often and even considering giving them the option of coming out of their cages when they want to. Your parrots need to get adequate exercise by flying around, and they can't do that if they're in their cages all the time. The fifth common mistake that bird owners tend to make is getting a cage that is way too small for their birds. Parrots were never meant to be in cages so when considering a cage it's always best to get the biggest cage that you can get for your birds. That way they have enough space to fly around and stretch their wings. Parrots oftentimes will spend a majority of their time at the top of their cages so it's better to get a cage that is wider than it is taller. Your parrots are also going to spend most of their time in their cages when you aren't home so it's best to get the largest cage you can so you have space to provide lots of toys while also leaving space for your birds to fly and climb around. In the sixth common mistake is providing only round perches for your birds. Brown perches often come with cages when you buy them but they shouldn't be the only perches that you have in your bird's cage. Prayers need natural wooden perches in their cages as it provides different shapes and sizes for your birds to exercise their feet. 
Round perches are really uncomfortable for birds and can cause sores on their feet and other feet problems later on in their lives like arthritis. Along with natural wooden perches you can also provide natural rope perches like Juice Sistel and Manila too. The seventh common mistake that bird owners tend to make and this one's a controversial one but I'll say it anyway and that is clipping your bird's wings. Parrots were made to fly and you need to think about why you would want to clip their wings in the first place. Parrots can learn to fly indoors and not crash into things they just need your guidance. And if you're worried about your bird escaping then you need to bird-proof your house like making sure all the doors leading to the outside are shut and all windows have window screens in them. You also need to teach your bird how to wear a harness or get a carrier if you want to take them outside because bruise can easily fly away if they get startled even if their wings aren't clipped flying is how birds exercise and get around and without flight your bird can lose flight muscles and become obese especially if they also aren't on a nutritionally balanced diet. The eighth common mistake is not going to an avian vet. Parrots are really great at hiding their illnesses so by the time they start showing signs of illness it may already be too late to do anything to help them. And going to a certified avian vet yearly for checkups will help you determine how your parrots are when they are healthy so you can catch any illnesses if you notice any changes. This includes knowing what their regular poops look like and knowing your bird's normal weight. Two usual ways that you can tell when your bird is sick so you can schedule a vet's appointment when you notice things are off. To a vet will also help you figure out if your bird has any underlying health problems that can be fixed or supplemented through diet changes and exercise and you'll also know where to go if your bird suddenly gets sick or hurt themselves by getting into things that they shouldn't have. The ninth common mistake is giving up on your bird when you're training them. It's not essential for our birds to learn how to spin or wave or play dead, but they do need to learn basic training like stepping up and recall training among other things. Some parrot owners may expect results right away, and when they don't get results they most likely will give up without trying to find ways to make it work. Your parrots deserve your focus and effort because training takes patience consistency and figuring out workarounds when things don't go as planned the the tenth common mistake is not paying attention to your bird's body language. If you find that your bird is constantly biting you then it may be because of hormones where you may not be paying attention to your bird's body language. Birds communicate through two ways, through chirping and body language so it's essential to be aware of what your bird is feeling by being observant. By learning how to read your bird's body language you'll be able to understand your bird's feelings and avoid getting bit. Inviting is usually used as a last resort when they're constantly trying to tell you something and you aren't listening. The eleventh common mistake is holding grudges. Parrots aren't the most well-behaved pets and they can do things that aren't favorable like pooping on everything biting you or biting furniture and making a mess. Now these are all innate behaviors and when your bird does anything that upsets you or gets you mad you can't hold grudges because they won't understand why. You're still being mad at that one time your bird pooped on your favorite shirt or destroyed your favorite necklace and you're lashing out at them they'll be so confused because they've already forgotten about all those things and will be wondering why you're mad at them. And I've gotten frustrated a couple times but I never hold it against my birds because they're just being themselves. And if you find that your bird misbehaves a lot then you probably need to dig a little deeper and see if you're doing anything that causes your birds to misbehave. 